Well, good morning. Hey, I'm here to kind of uh, try to do a tool cutter grinder roundup of uh, how I use the, this machine and, uh, and the uh, various attachments that I use on it. And I kind of got stuff piled up here, so let's go over it real quick, all right? Okay, I'll get you unhooked real quick here. Oh, not that one. There's another one. There it is. Okay. Now, um, this is the various stuff I used. And uh, I got the index plate on here. And uh, it's got a latch on the bottom down there that you move in and it grabs these notches. And it's a standard 24 notch uh, plate. But this is not a Cincinnati attachment. This came off an Italian uh, uh, work head, but I can't remember the name of the machine uh, that it came off of. It uh, uh, was a machine that fell off a truck years ago. And, um, but uh, I, I traded that head off and I go, well, gee, I could use it now that I got a 40 taper. <laughs> But I'm going to figure out something here to adapt 40 taper to this uh, uh, Cincinnati head that's on here. Um, this uh, motor here is not stock either. And I have the stock motor set up, which is kind of ridiculous. It's got a big uh, pulley. Uh, and uses a V-belt and a high-speed motor. And what I did, I found an 1100 RPM motor here and then just uh, made my own pulleys and um, some flat belts uh, that I, that I uh, modify, I guess, from uh, micro uh, uh, groove belts. And I'll show that in the next video. Um, the... Uh, Various tools. Um, I, I grind. Every, I grind everything from like this um, um, cutoff tool to uh, regular uh, lathe tools. I use this type of tool as a micro 100 standard tool, and I modify a little bit for uh, finish cuts on the Monarch 10 E. Um, and uh, I go into uh, boring bars. Here's. Um, a boring bar that I fabricated, and uh, it's uh, uh, really, really nice. I can change the angle on it. I braised a pretty thick piece of carbide. I took and uh, forged it over by heating uh, this half-inch piece of steel, and you see I bent it so I can get the uh, carbide on center at the right angle. Here's another one in a squ little square head here. Now, the the circular cutters I I, I fabricate and and uh, um, here it is in the Moore head and the uh, head has limited travel, so you make a cutter like this so you can punch bigger holes and uh, Moore uh, offered tools like this similar to this. Um, at one time. They're kind of out of the jig board business, you know. They're into the CNC jig board business. So, and grinding and, and whatever. Um, so here's one of those cutters here that uh, you see I offset it and I can get a whole bunch of ranch out of this larger square type criterion head. Now, I could stick this into this um, this type of criterion head, which is just an old Enco. It's really quite a good one. Uh, I could stick it in here for even more offset. You know, see, that'll punch like an 8-inch hole. Easy. Um, okay. Now, for the lathe tools and, and, and a lot of things, you see, I put this vise in other videos uh, into the 5C call it. Uh, in the work head. I can use this little vise to hold inserts and small pieces of carbide to modify. I can stick this little thing in there to use as a grinding rest for um, hand grinding. I can use this um, 
V block here, stick it in a one inch collet, and um, let's see, and uh, sharpen the boring bars that are fire fabricated or factory made. Uh, boring bars, there's even one down there. Okay, so these are a lot of things um, I can do that are basic, you know, for the lathe and the more jig board. Then we get into um, uh, for the uh, horizontal milling machine, here's like a, a regular wheel cutter. It's an eighth inch. This one you would sharpen. Let me uh, change hands here. Um, with the tooth rest mounted uh, to the table. See, that's what this one is here. Like that, see? It'll hold it and you can get the wheel in and grind that tooth. Now, this type of tooth rest here is mounted uh, to the machine. And when, um, let's see, I got this locked. Let me unlock it and see if we can move that a little bit. I think it's still engaged. Yeah. Let's see, let me move it. You see it rotated? There we go. Yeah, rotates. Okay, that's how you do a helical um, cutter. Now, hold on, I gotta have a drink of coffee. I'm getting hoarse. It's very early in the morning. I'm not gonna tell you how early. <laughs> okay, got that there. Then, I, um, of course, I talked about uh, using um, uh, diamond wheel for carbide, right? There's a diamond wheel. And uh, here's a uh, vitrified uh, cup wheel, similar to this uh, diamond cup wheel for uh, high-speed steel. Um, I've got a uh, straight grinding wheel back here right now that's uh, vitrified for uh, steel. Then um, the safest... Uh, you got to be careful with cup wheels. If you bump a cup wheel, uh, it can explode. And I've blown a few of these up. And you want to stay out of the uh, scatter range. And most people don't use a guard, but I've, I, I've, uh, I've used this guard just in case. And I try to stay out of the way of it. You got to keep your body out of the blast zone, the edge, okay? Now, this wheel here is a dish wheel, and it's the safest type of wheel to use. It's least apt to explode um, grinding on this face, okay? And I, you can use this back face here. You can see I dressed it just a little bit to... Uh, Cut, uh, cut an angle for something. I can't remember what I was doing. I might have sharpened a tap or something. Um, there's just a lot of things you can use the machine for. Here's a thicker wheel here, and it can change the speed on the machine and use thicker wheels, okay? Up to a uh, seven inch diameter. Now, now we're getting into more serious stuff here. Now, this you have to be so extremely careful with. Now, what I have here is a reinforced cutoff wheel. And you can do a lot of stuff with this. You can cut things off and, and things. But even though it's reinforced, you, you've got to be, be careful. Uh, a person was killed uh, locally by a reinforced cutoff wheel. But I think it was on a die grinder, but I, I can't remember. It wasn't on one of these. But this, this can really kill you. Okay, now this is a lot more serious. And uh, I was um, introduced to these by a very experienced uh, operator of one of these machines. And you've got to be so careful with this. This is a non-reinforced 16th inch thick uh, cutoff wheel. And it's just a straight... Uh, uh, there you go, you heard it ring. Uh, it's a it's a, it's a regular vitrified cutoff wheel. Now these things here can break and come apart. 
And when they do, it sounds like a pistol going off. I'm not kidding you. Bang! And uh, there's no... <laughs> a big red uh, uh, safety stop switch will do you no good. It already happened. And I've blown several of these and some of the thinner ones. So you got to be extremely careful. Because if you just, you know, you have it in the wheel head and you accidentally bump it. You know, you see this table here is ball bearing and it moves easily. So you bump that, it's gonna explode. But what you can do, do with this is you can grind flutes that are real delicate and not overheat them because of the um, small contact area. You can dress it with a diamond and all that. And another thing, now this is the tricky thing. If you need a ball bearing that has a, that has a groove, and um, you can mount a ball bearing um, that doesn't have a groove in it, like this one here. And you can form that groove with this wheel here uh, precisely. I mean precision. And uh, sometimes you can uh, fudge something in uh, with a bearing that's unavailable. And of course, you know, you protect the bearing, you could sandwich it between steel and mount it in the motorized work head and grind that groove. I thought that might be fun. Okay, I'm going to call it good right now. And I got uh, more to come. Bye.